If, you're, if your long-term goal is to change the dialogue in this country and build support for change, okay, there's a time and place for confrontation. I'm not sure that necessarily there may be, you know, the, the council chamber. Can we can we go in there? Can we actually affect real change, or, or can we, or do we just have to go in there and be confrontational? And what's, there's what's some the, precedent for what you're talking about on um, the Senate or the, the House of Representatives, whatever city UC Davis is part of, they're investigating us outside of the University of California system. The House of Representatives in UC Davis is investigating. LA City Council passed, uh, um, I forgot what it was. Um, and the corporate it, personhood. The, yeah, uh, yeah, support of ending corporate personhood. Um, and also there was, uh, uh, um, uh, there has been a couple of judges that have, so there are precedents, there are legal precedents, there, there have judges been have ruled in favor of the, the Second Amendment, if, as long as these people are, 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 you know, pooping elsewhere, I don't know, um, I, the, the Second Amendment I, does I, I, trump... I, 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 want, I want to throw something out, you know, I mean, Labor will come in and be supportive, okay, but I want, I, want, I want to give you a for instance, okay, when Occupy Rochester, formed up there, okay? The mayor had to make a decision on whether to allow that to go forward and to work with the occupiers or to take a hard line like a lot of other mayors have. In Rochester, what actually happens is the unions went to the mayor and said, because we, we do have a certain amount of political power, he said, we're supporting the occupiers See if you can't come to an agreement and allow them to occupy. Okay. Now, the same union leader that actually went and had that dialogue with the mayor up there <coughs> had a meeting, this was a few weeks ago, with the business community. Because what his union is trying to do is to develop a training program in minority neighborhoods. And it's being done by the workers for that union actually taking money out of their paychecks, okay, and putting it into a fund, all right, that will be totally devoted to apprentice training for minorities. And they were having a meeting with the business community to pitch this. It doesn't cost the business community anything. It's the workers that are paying for this program. The Occupy movement up there found out that a, a business meeting was taking place, okay. <clears throat> what actually happened is they, they decided to stage a demonstration outside the building that this was taking place, okay. Well, when the meeting broke up, the business leaders, of course, went out the back door. The labor leaders and the civil rights lawyers that were in this meeting went out the front door, and the occupiers, not knowing who they were, abused them. And these were the same people that had fought the fight to allow you to occupy in the first place. I mean, they were actually spitting on them. Okay. Needless to say, that particular union leader at the time was going to withdraw his support and tell the mayor just to rest him. Okay. He calmed down, did the right thing. But when you have action events, like we'll support you, but when we have action events, you know, we have our own agenda. We're trying to affect change in our own way, okay? And what, 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 whether there needs to be communication when you have events and have actions that the stakeholders like us are included and communicated with, okay? So you don't have a situation which is more divisive, okay, than it is healing. On moving your agenda forward. And that's, I bring it up just as an illustrative thing. If you're going to float ideas about actions and stuff, then you need to have a committee and you need to discuss it and then bring it back to the group <clears throat> so that we don't end up with situations that are going to divide us and not unite us. Okay. And I, I would say that uh, before we start uh, going into the areas of direct action or the more con uh, confrontational uh, approaches, the actual act of, of, of disseminating this is actually fairly pedestrian. I mean, you, you would want to have, you want to make sure that this gets distributed to the media. 
Uh, you were planning on, uh, on disseminating this among unions. Uh, like I said, you know, just just having not 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 giving a copy to the city council, assuming they're going to accept it, but just letting them know we're here. Because uh, I think that's a very important first step. Because uh, and also getting getting this uh, in the hands of the media. Um, Chris Hush from W from W E N Y W. Yeah, he, he, he's he been knows. he's been very responsive. He's been very very fair. Yeah, with I, this. And, and I believe I believe he also <coughs> attends the, the the city council meetings, and um, so you know the first steps are pretty pretty pedestrian, pretty simple and basic. You can, you can demonstrate, demonstrate. See, if I was going to go to city council, I'd actually, I'd actually work it to the point where can I get enough support to pass a resolution on that council in support? Yeah. Okay. Rather than come in cold and put that out there, I think you can never tell with politicians. I think in this case, you got a 50-50 chance if we take the time to do some background work to be. To discuss is why not why not shoot for the whole thing and see if you can't get enough votes for a resolution in support of the declaration. Okay. And then if you don't think you can get it, go in and do it anyway. <laughs> oh Myra's not is dominated by Corning Incorporated anyway. <laughs> hmm. But but I think I, I think you could you could, you could be well you could be well served. Maybe if you want to get more of a profile, to have a committee that's going to work on action events. I would say at least, I would say at least, at least identifying at least one person on that would, few would probably be on board, whether it be Captain Wilson, Elmira Police Department. This declaration, whether it be. I don't know about the new mayor of Elmira. <laughs> No. Well, I think it's great that Professor Bike here, she's here, and that we have a professor that's actually supporting us. I mean, I go to CCC, and I often write for the school newspaper. I would love, I've been writing articles about the Occupy movement, and I would love to put this in there. I think there needs to be more students and more teachers involved, because it directly affects all of us. And if CCC is, you know, supposed to be about education, this directly affects all of us. And this is a big, you know, this is, you know over everything we do in our life, so we should be educating more about this. So I, I will do as much as I can on that end of things. I think also something I haven't heard about in here and something I don't think there's been enough of is teachings in Albany, there was at least one professor who came and it was a teacher on the millionaire's tax, which I mean, I'm a little more on the radical side than that, but it, Took an hour to talk about the the millionaire's tax, what it meant, what repealing it or letting it die out would mean. Yeah. And I think also if you could identify faculty in local schools that would call in and talk about some some facet of our current situation and, and maybe do some consciousness raising about it, like how people Facts or uh, I don't know here. Like this is a small group, and Albany, like it, it tends. Sometimes it feel like there's like a mob mentality, or like a lot of people saying like oh, we are the 99 percent. Don't. It's really kind of like I feel like a shallow analysis. And don't have that many facts if they're in front of the media, and I think consciousness raising or education should probably be a central part, if, if anything, because it, you could take a long time. For me and Mike talked about it recently. I don't know what a derivative is. I, I've read about derivatives many times. I don't know what it is. I, the 99% thing has started this conversation about like wealth concentration, but and you get in front of the media, you say one thing, they counter, and then what do you counter with? I, I feel like if there's teachings that put these things into perspective, it, it, I think it would be useful in enriching people's, it, people's arguments and 
I don't know like, sort of back where he at in IRL or like, who could do these things, but I think identifying these people saying this is what we're trying to do. What do you see of a team team? Uh, when I talk to you, more, the organization at the time when we all met in Center Way Square, we had talked about sort of organizing and making a, a list, which this seems to kind of be, um, of all the main issues and grievances that this addresses, right? But not only that, but to do kind of what you just said, which is to expand on that and to explain why these things are happening, how these things are happening, um, you know, the implications of these things, and to really be able to um, teach and explain these issues on a deeper level, more so than just saying that these issues exist. I, I think that's kind of what you're getting at. I agree with that, and maybe that would be the next step. This is what what I was saying when, when I, you know when, when he made his comments about how we need to change the conversation um, from whatever to being about economic uh, injustice. Um, with any type of organization, whether it's this or whether it's honor society or whatever it is, um, you have your overall uh, purpose, which is the wanting to change the conversation and wanting to improve the society, but. For an organization, you kind of have to have measurable goals. Um, Can I say something? I, yes. Um, I'm sorry, I wanted to insert this, but um, you know, you sometimes you have to like to get people's attention to simplify issues. And there's like the one thing that strikes me: they have um, the graphs, and there's one in particular they have T-shirts with that show. The distribution of wealth in a simple, ma simple manner with the lines, and um, I think that should that is something people uh, they kind of know in the back of their minds, but when they see it there in black and white, makes it more right. And I think that a couple of things, maybe some graphs or some posters, we could like put up when we have a meeting. And would they, people wouldn't have to talk about the issues that with them and it might give them ideas. I totally agree. I think we should actually do both. You, know, you, you could have a flyer or something or maybe in front of a, a, of a packet that has that type of visual, um, yeah. more simplified uh, information that just kind of like shows the disparity. Right. But then for someone who wants to get more into it, it has more in-depth information beyond that to, that really analyzes the whole situation as, as well. Yeah. I agree. I was thinking that myself. That if we had um, a newsletter, a brochure, anything out that had information, maybe static information that doesn't change in a week, but changes in a year or two, that way people can become educated. And the more educated, the more people will have behind us, and you know, that's a lot, better. And a lot of the numbers that you know people are, are are using now, these figures have been. I have a uh, business ethics book from a class I took. This this book is probably from. 2009, 2010, the numbers that that book is, is talking about are the same numbers that we're, we're putting out now. So we don't have to be that afraid of the numbers we right. We talk about you know, 1% having 40%, right. these types of ratios. Yeah, we, don't have to, we, we can use those types of ratios without fear of the Yeah. And they're not overly aggressive. They're not overly aggressive. like we have to disseminate like real history lessons like if anybody's familiar with Howard Zinn people's history of America he talks about you know Joe Hill the socialist movement in the United States what the unions have done to change the face of labor in the United States and everything like that like if we could even <laughs> print out excerpts of that or simplified versions of that to get out to people so people can understand that what you learn in media or what you learn in school isn't always the whole story right, you don't get anything I understand that the news for sure. Is so, right. news, the so we're becoming the media in a way, and we have to disseminate the truth. Mm -hmm. 
I've got the perfect graph for you. It will show you income disparity in, in the last time this office was in Great Depression. Okay. And the interesting thing is the outcome of that was labor was empowered, labor can be grew, more and more people came into unions. And actually, if, if the, the same thing holds true, the income this America was at its peak when unions and, and the income was more equalized. When unions you know, were a, a, a big percentage of the workplace. Obviously, we've been identified and targeted because we're fighting for our very survival. And I can get into what is going on state by state where they're trying to, to basically take away the right to collectively bargain. And unions also need to bring out the fact that this globalization that, that Americans are still the people who buy stuff. They are not paying people overseas enough money so that they can buy the stuff 